What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. So lately I've been getting a lot of questions from people who want to learn data science but they don't know from where to start. Hence, in this video I will be discussing how I would go about learning data science if I had to start from ground zero. And more specifically, I will focus this video around the technical skills and share examples and resources for you to get started. Right, so the first thing I would suggest is to learn Python and more specifically learn the five most used libraries in Python. The first library is NumPy, which stands for Numerical Python. And this is the library that is going to help you do your calculations. So in this library, I suggest learning the following. What is an array? What is a vector? And what is a matrix? And what are the differences? How to create arrays? How to create a matrix? How to create a list? Learn about how to append arrays, how to index arrays, and the different data types of arrays. Learn about the basic maths of NumPy. So how to add arrays together, how to minus, how to multiply, how to divide, etc., etc then learn about the mathematical functions of numpy so sum max mean average etc etc learn about how to reshape how to transpose and how to broadcast using numpy arrays by the way for every library and every tool i'm going to speak about in this video i'm going to have links in the video description of tutorials and free resources so you should go and check it out Right, after finishing with NumPy, the next library I suggest learning is Pandas. So Pandas is the library that is going to help you for data manipulation and data analysis. So in this library, I suggest learning what are Pandas series and how to create one, what are Pandas data frames and how to create one, how to load a CSV file into a Pandas data frame, and then how to investigate the data frame, how to do column filtering, how to do row filtering, how to do slicing, how to sort the data frame, how to aggregate the data frame, so apply calculations on the data frame, and also how to create new calculated fields in your data frame for your analysis. Additionally, within Pandas, you should learn how to do joins and unions, which is the step where you bring the data together. And I guarantee you, as a data scientist, you will be doing joins all the time. So here, you should definitely learn how to run a left join, how to run an inner join, how to run a full join, how to run a cross join, and also how to do a union. By the way, if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, moving on, the next two libraries I suggest learning is Matplotlib and Seaborn. And the reason these two libraries go together is because they do exactly the same thing. They are used for data visualizations. To start with Matplotlib now, here I suggest learning how to create line graphs, multiple line graphs, scatter plots, bar plots, combinations, and histograms and generally learn how to plot the data from your data frames using matplotlib in order to investigate trends and relationships within your data frames. Now, if we switch over to Seaborn, which is used for the same thing, the difference is that Seaborn allows a lot more functionality when you're creating all these visuals. So you can definitely customize it better, use more colors, more plots, more fancy plots. And at the same time, you are actually using a lot less code in order to create all these graphs versus Matplotlib. Right, after you learn these four libraries, then I suggest learning sklearn, which is the library you are going to use for machine learning. Now, in order to learn machine learning now, you need to have some basic understanding of the theory behind the algorithms. So you will need to first understand the algorithm you are going to use and then come over to Python in order to run the code. However, in this video, I'm gonna focus mostly on the code and how to use the libraries. So within machine learning now, we have supervised learning models and unsupervised learning models. 
Within supervised learning, we have regression where we are trying to predict a continuous number and classification where we are trying to predict a class. In unsupervised learning, we are trying to identify groups of data with similar characteristics. So my suggestion now is to learn one model per category, let's say, to start with. So for regression, I suggest learning how to run a simple linear regression in Python. So I have a tutorial over here where I go through the data pre-processing phase. Then I explain how linear regression works. Then we run linear regression and we make our predictions. Afterwards, I suggest learning how to run a classification machine learning model. So my suggestion is to start with logistic regression. So here again, I have a tutorial where I go through the data pre-processing phase. Then I explain how logistic regression works. Then we run our logistic regression. We evaluate it. We do some hyperparameter tuning. And at the end, we do our predictions. Afterwards, I suggest moving to unsupervised machine learning model. And my suggestion here is to learn how to run k-means clustering. So here I have a tutorial on k-means where again, I explain how k-means works and the theory behind it. Then we run our k-means and our clusters. Then we run some principal component analysis in order to improve our clusters. And at the end, we have our output, which is basically a cluster pair observation. And then we take these results into Power BI in order to investigate our clusters and create our insights. Right, so after you finish learning these three algorithms, you're going to have a very good understanding of how to run Python and also how to run machine learning models. Then you can start learning additional algorithms. However, we are not done here. After Python, I would suggest learning SQL. And this is again very important to know as a data scientist. So I suggest learning how to clean, manipulate, join, and store data into SQL for two reasons. The first reason is that SQL is a database and it's going to help you a lot when it comes to machine learning deployment. Just because when you do run your machine learning models and you do have your output, you're going to have to push it into a database and store it into a database. And then from the database, you are going to send the results into an app, let's say, or into a visualization tool or into a website, etc., etc. Additionally, it's also going to benefit you a lot when it comes to automation as you can schedule all these jobs to run themselves. And with this way, you save a lot of time of not having to manually go and run your models every day or every week or every month. I'm going to have links in the video description for SQL tutorials to teach you how to do all this. And also I'm going to have two additional links to my latest two videos where I demonstrate how all these automation from CSV to SQL to Python to SQL to Power BI works and how to schedule this to run itself. Right, and the last thing I would suggest is to learn how to use a visualization tool like Power BI, Tableau, or ClickSense. Now, the reason why you need to know how to use these tools is because these tools are going to help you to push your analytics with the wider business or to deploy your machine learning models in them. Just because you cannot really go into Python, let's say, and send this notebook with the code and the predictions to the business and expect them to A, know how to read this, B, how to run it, how to refresh it, and how to get the results. No one will ever do that. So what you will need to do is to save the results of your analysis or your predictions back to a database and then connect that database to a visualization tool. And after you do that, all you have to do is build your dashboard into the visualization tool, like the one we have over here with our predictions. Then we click on publish and this is going to publish it in a workspace online. And all you have to do is click on update the app and then this is going to give you a link 
So if we click update, for example, we can copy this link and then send it to everyone in the organization. And as soon as they click this link, they are going to see this dashboard we have over here. So it helps a lot when it comes to ease of sharing with the business and also automation. I'm going to have links in the video description about how to create Power BI dashboards from scratch and also how to deploy your machine learning models into Power BI. Right, so this is the plan I was going to follow if I was to start again learning data science, which is Python, then the libraries, then SQL, then Power BI or any other visualization tool. If you want more of a deep dive into not just technical skills, but the whole journey of becoming a data scientist, then I'm going to have a link in the video description where I go into great detail about all the aspects you have to know before you become a data scientist. And I also suggest some free online courses to take. Right data friends. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. And if you feel like you did, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.